This video shows you how to work with assemblies and disassemblies in BrightPearl. In this video, we'll assemble a wheel from the component parts, and then we'll disassemble a case of wine into separate bottles, to show you two different scenarios. It's also worth having a look at the other videos we've got, understanding bundles, assemblies, packages and customization, and then also bundles on sales and purchase orders. So assemblies should be used when the component parts are physically built into a finished product. And the difference from these and bundles is that with bundles the components can still be sold separately, but with an assembly the components can no longer be sold separately. So BrightPearl is not a manufacturing system, which means that these assemblies are really just a case of inventory corrections. We're going to be removing the component parts and adding the finished item. And the example we're going to use is a bike wheel, where we've got 10 spokes, a rim and a hub. Now technically bikes have more than 10 spokes, but it makes the maths easier if I use 10. In Bright Pearl, we've got four stock tracked items already set up. We've got the hub, the rim, the spoke, and the wheel. We can see we've got no wheels in stock, so let's build one up now. And to do that, what we need to do is remove a hub, remove a rim, remove 10 spokes, and add a wheel. So to remove inventory, you click the inventory quantity, and then click Edit Remove Inventory. This screen shows us all the stock we have of this particular product and the price we paid for it. And for the hub, it's £20. So let's edit the four to remove one. We're going to add a code for this particular assembly process. And you can see we've got three hubs, and the value of inventory removed is 20. So let's do that with the other items. Remove a rim. Which again is 20. So the total value of inventory removed so far is 40. We're going to remove 10 spokes. And the spokes are 50 pence each, so that's five pounds. So we're moving 10. And finally, what we want to do is add the wheel. We click Add Infantry, put one into stock with the value of 45 and the same adjustment code. So we've now got one in stock. BrightPearl has been making accounting transactions for these in the background. We can find them all by doing an accounting search for our assembly code. And here we can see four transactions, the three that we use to remove inventory, and then a fourth to actually add the final finished goods. Now you notice that the final finished goods do not include a cost of manufacture, and that's because I'm actually paying my staff anyway, and the accounting will be recorded elsewhere in my accounts. And you can see that these accounting transactions are being made between 1001 and 5000, and the 5000 code here is what we have set up in our accounting system for stock corrections. To check that, we go set up, accounting, nominal codes. And if you're in the US, this will say accounting accounts. And if we scroll down, we'll see that there are two codes, the stock corrections for adding stock and stock corrections for removing stock. And we'd probably recommend that you create a new code, which is stock corrections, so that you can see these as being different from purchases. Now whilst that might have felt like quite a manual process, it showed you the principles of what was involved. And you can actually make all of those different stock corrections in one go using the Update by CSV screen, which is under the Products menu. Update Inventory by CSV. So here's the CSV file, and you need these column headers. But because we've got unique SKUs for all of our products, the only columns we need to fill out are the SKU and the quantity. And what we're doing here is removing one hub, removing one rim, removing 10 spokes to add one wheel. So we'll match product by SKU, we'll add remove the quantities given in the file, select a warehouse, and we'll use prices from our cost price list. We'll choose the file and update inventory. So that's done exactly the same thing as the previous steps, but it's all in one file. And if I now search for the products, we'll see that we've got two wheels in stock. A disadvantage of this method is you can't put a reference in, which makes it harder to single out the accounting transactions that relate to this assembly. 
Next we're going to look at disassemblies, which is exactly the same as assemblies, but the other way around. We're going to buy a few cases of wine, and because we still sell the cases as well as the bottles, we're only going to disassemble one box into 12 individual bottles. In Brightpole we've got these two products already set up, and they're both stock tracked items. We've got the bottle and the case of 12, and you can see how we've got the quantity or the unit of measure in the product name itself. So let's place a new purchase order for 10 crates. We add the case to the order, update the quantity to 10, set the price that the supplier charges for this, and save changes. We'd send this off to the supplier and then a few days later receive the inventory. So we'll receive 10 into stock, so that's 10 cases of 12 which is 120 bottles. However, until we've actually disassembled one of these cases, there's no stock of the bottles themselves. And because we're actually breaking this case apart, it's not something that can be put back together again very simply, which is why we're not using bundles here. Bundles are used when the items are much less coupled together. So what we need to do is remove one case and add 12 bottles. Let's click this, click Edit Remove Inventory, edit the 10 to make it 9, so we're going to remove one, and then add 12 bottles. Now because the case cost us £50, each of these bottles cost us £4.17. And here we've now got 9 cases left in stock and 12 bottles. So in this video, we've shown you how to work with assemblies and disassemblies. We assembled a bike wheel, both manually and by importing a CSV file, and we disassembled a case of wine into bottles.